Hi guys, I'm Pratik Singh. Let's talk about margin. Now remember in an earlier example in forwards, we talked about the risk of default between two parties when they were exchanging gold. Well, margin in futures is a mechanism to prevent that default. Basically, anyone, whether buying or selling, has to put up some money to enter into that contract. Now, this is the reason why brokers charge a margin. It's to prevent the risk of a default. And margin, as you know, is basically a small percentage of the entire contract value. Now, the margin itself is divided into two parts, span and exposure. As a trader, you won't be able to see these numbers on your broker terminal or anywhere else, but that margin components are basically built of span and exposure, both which are mandated by the stock exchange. Now, the span and exposure margin is actually calculated up to three times a day every day, and it keeps changing during the day based on volatility. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. If a stock is very volatile, the risk is also going up. Hence, the margin also keeps moving up. And if the market stays almost flat or there's no movement during the day, the margin tends to be the same and doesn't move a lot. And since the margin is a mechanism to prevent default, you actually have to maintain that amount with your broker at all times. Now, let's suppose you're in a futures contract where you need to maintain a margin of, say, 10,000 rupees. Now, for whatever reason, if you're not able to do that, the broker will close your position or square off your position. So therefore, you need to maintain that margin always with the broker and it'll get blocked when you enter that trade. As soon as the trade is closed, then that margin is immediately unblocked. So let's see how you can actually check margin before you actually place an order. On Kite, I'm going to type in fee and I'm going to look for September futures. That's right here. I'll add it to the market watch. I'll simply click on the buy order window. Now over here, uh, you can see that the quantity is 600. 600 is the lot size, which means this is the minimum amount of units or shares I can buy in Infosys in futures. So I can't really type 601 or 602. The order won't go through. It's 600, 1200, 1800, so on and so forth. So I have to buy in multiples of 600 quantities. And the price you see over here is 1,701.4. This is the futures price. And this could be different from spot. That's the underlying price of Infosys. Now, when you multiply the quantity, that's one lot in this case, multiplied by 1,701, you'll get the total contract size. Now, since we're trading futures, you don't pay that entire amount. You pay a percentage of it called margin. And right here, we can see margin required 1,83,000. This is the amount you need to put up to trade one lot of emphasis. Now, even if I change the order to a sell order, where the quantity and price is exactly the same, the margin requirement is also the same. And another way to actually find out margin is by just using the margin calculator. So I'll type margin calculator Zerodha on Google. And the first result over here will bring me to the calculator. Very simple to use. I'll choose Exchange NFO Product Futures, which actually means National Stock Exchange's Futures and Options segment. So I'll select NFO over here. And I'll change this to Infosys September. Quantity 600, and I'll add. You can see that we can see the split of margin. That's 1,47,000 for span, 35,000 for exposure, bringing us the total of 1,83,000 as your total margin. Now, I'd like to show you one more thing. Our entire example was based on Infosys 30th September. Now, this is the current month expiry because September is right now. But if you click on the symbol list over here, you'll notice that there are two more contracts. There's 28th October Infosys and 25th November Infosys. What this basically means is that September is the current month. 20th October is the next expiry or the next month, also called the middle month. And then we have Infosys 25th November, which is the far month contract. So generally, you'll always see three expiries 
in futures and options, the current month, next month, and far month contracts. So we've added only one contract, that's 30th September, and the total margin required is 1,83,000. Now what I'll do is, I'll show you something interesting. I'll add Infosys 28th October as a sell transaction or an opposite transaction from the initial one, which was a buy. And once I add this, you'll notice that the total margin has reduced to only 35,000 rupees. And the reason this is, is that risk has been reduced on this trade. We are long current month, but short the next month, which means that your risk has been neutralized or decreased significantly. That's why the margin needed is also decreased. This is exactly why brokers charge margin to actually reduce risk of default. So in this case, we can see the margin benefit is 3,30,000 and the trader only pays 35,000 for this position where you have a buy and you have a sell. So now that you understand margin pretty well, in the next video, we're gonna talk about leverage and the payoff structure. Key takeaways from this video are, 